Jay, um, I'm Mark Familio. I'm the uh, chairman and president. Well, nice to meet you guys. Film Festival. Thank you. And um, first, I want to ask you about your Italian heritage because All I right. have to. I have to. All right. Because uh, originally, I was told that you were was uh, was Jay Lenowitz. I said I don't think so. No, it wasn't Jay Lenowitz. No, no, it's all no. Leno. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it's Lino. My my dad sold insurance when he can You know, now everybody wants to have the language and the heritage, but back then. Everybody wanted to be American. You yeah, know. Of course. Like my, my grandparents never learned English, but my father had to learn English. And when he was selling insurance, the name was actually Lino. He made it Leno. It sounded more American. Of course, his first name was Angelo. So I don't know who you're <laughs> you know, but, but he just did. Because all my uncles were Lino. Tony Lino, John Lino, and my dad Leno. So, yeah, so that's funny. Yeah, I went through that myself. It was familio. And I remember my dad asking me, if you want to change your name, Feel free. I'm like, yeah. well, why would I want to? I don't understand. Well, I'll tell you a funny story. One of my producers in Italy, so he went to Famari, the village where my people come from, and of course, everybody looked like me. So he, <laughs> he becomes friends with the mayor, okay? Six months later, the mayor shows up in the Tonight Show audience, and it's just like an Italian mayor. He's got the little jacket, not yeah, yeah, a little yeah. tight, and they had the Missolino. You know, they say they bring it back. Say, Missolino, I am the mayor. This is the vice mayor, so and so. In our village, we wish to honor you. I said, well, uh, well, that's not really. Oh, no, when there will be a statue of you and your grandfather. You come to this country, you make a big star. I said, well, I said, no, we, we, but we want to put a statue of you in the village. I said, well, I'm not really a statue. Please, would you let us? I said, yeah, okay. He goes, yes? Good, okay. The basic statue is a 75,000. If you want to be on the hill, <laughs> it's 125,000. I go, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm fine. If I want to look down from the hill with my grandfather, it's 125,000. It doesn't get more Italian than that. It just, it just made me laugh. It's, he gets this all, yeah, we can do it? Yeah, okay, good. Now it's going to get to $75,000. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. So where did, where did they come when they first, when they came? Oh, well, they came from Ellis Island. Yeah, Ellis Island. Yeah, I mean, I got the certificate when they came through. And did you stay in New York? Yeah, 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 my... my my whole family is from New York, and my dad, when he sold insurance, he got transferred to, uh, it was like the Green Acres show, up to <laughs> Andover, Massachusetts, which is about 30 miles outside of Boston. It was a lot yeah. more rural then when right. I was a kid, but yeah. I've seen you here at the Van Wezel, I don't know, five or six times over the last uh, 25 years, I think. Yeah, it's a great, great venue. And we're, we're really happy to see you in Sarasota. Well, thank you, thank you. The film festival, it is our 25th anniversary. Right. We, we see... Approximately treat about fifty thousand people a year. We're the largest regional festival. Oh, that's great! In the United States, and and we've really been able to showcase a lot of films. When we had the opportunity to sit and speak with you for a few minutes, we jumped at it. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah we well, like you it. know, this is the golden age for film, because there's so many places to show it now. In the old days, you'd make a film, you literally had to go to a festival to see it. Now you've got all these streaming, but people just looking for product, you know? I mean, there are more actors working now, I think, than any other point. People always talk about, oh, there's no job. Yes, there are. Is that true? Is yeah. that true? You, you've got, you, I'm at the point, I never heard of the show, I never heard of the network. People go, I'm on Happiness. What's Happiness on? It's on Pumpkin. What's Pumpkin? You know what? <laughs> well, well, that's the network at Channel 698. Oh, all right. You know? <laughs> but there's just so many venues now for young creative people that I, I think it's really terrific it's it's really good people don't really appreciate it. they think oh it must have been better you no years ago you had three networks and if you weren't on and then if you weren't a white guy with blonde hair you didn't get on you know? mm -hmm. we really enjoyed your show and obviously you love cars you love yeah, like cars. yeah something yeah you got a thing for them right yeah how many do you have cheaper than coke and hookers yeah yeah, yeah. is it it is <laughs> ultimately it <laughs> All is right. yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, he says I argue with Charlie Sheen about this. You know, all the yeah. Time. And, yeah, and and uh, my favorite Charlie Sheen joke. I said <laughs> Charlie, he went through two hundred million dollars. He spent it on hookers, alcohol, and gambling, and the rest of the money he just wasted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's hysterical, <laughs> but true. When especially talking about Charlie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, you've been in a bunch of films. 
Not a lot. Well, you no, know, not a bit. He's yeah, been in a few films. Yeah, films. Yeah, yeah. obviously it's not my... This Do you is seek him out? Well, when I started, you know, I, I, I was in Los Angeles. I landed in Los Angeles. I had no money. And my mother's so worried, you know. So I'm standing on a street corner, nine days later, a guy named Yvonne Passer, a film director in Czechoslovakia, drives by. He stops the car. He goes, you an actor? Yes. You want to do a movie with Michael Caine? I said, yeah, sure. You go see Sel uh, Selos and in Century City. So I go to see Century and and said, uh, they said, if I'm Passer called, they said, you want you in this movie? I said, okay. So they fly in Morocco, you know. So the next day, I... Two days later, I go to Morocco, and I call my mom. She goes, how's it going in Hollywood? I'm in Morocco. She goes, what are you doing in Morocco? I got a movie. How can you get a movie? You just went out there. I go, honey, my, my, mom, I mean, this guy stopped me on the street, said you want to be in my movie. I said, sure. I'm mean, so stupid. What was the movie? Silver Bears with Michael Caine right. and uh, Louis Jordan. And, uh, yeah. It's funny. That was a mid-budget movie at $7 million. Right. That was, like, pretty high. High, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was it in the seventies? Uh, seventies, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so yeah. stupid, yeah. No, I remember those days. Yeah, well, it's fabulous. So you've done voiceovers and you've got involved with some animation. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. voice of yours. Well, I mean, it's fun to do. I, I, I get a kick out of it. Uh, you know, you get those checks, those nine cent checks, fifteen <laughs> cent checks. You know. Who do you look for uh, inspiration in comedy? Is that a silly question, perhaps? But uh, what makes you laugh? Yeah, what makes me laugh? Well, I, I like Bob Newhart was always one of my favorites because it was always the smart humor. I have nothing against comedians that work blue or dirty. <laughs> it's just it doesn't seem creative to me. Right. It was always more fun to come up with a, a word that sounds like a swear that is funnier. You know, I, mean, I used to do that on Letterman show. I'd say, you know, you go to the carnival and they have these syphilitic druids running the ride. They would go syphilitic druid. Is it, do druids get syphilis? That's right, Dave. They do it, and, and it would go off on a tangent. And you know, and it, it was just so much fun rather than just using uh, the F word or something of that nature. You know? Absolutely. But I used to love Newhart just because he looked like a normal person. There was no funny clothes or props. I mean, he had a joke as a kid that I loved. It wasn't the funniest joke. I just liked the process. He used to a bit about the, the astronaut, the first astronaut to have uh, contact with an alien. So he's being grilled by the reporters, you know. And one of the reporters says, well, how far ahead of us are these aliens? And Bob says, about six weeks. <laughs> and you don't realize... <laughs> like it's it, a fact. Yeah, but it's so much, I mean, but it's six weeks. You know, two weeks <laughs> no. is pretty close. <laughs> six months, we, we'll never be here. But six, six oh, weeks, we, six <laughs> weeks oh, oh, it's just always out of reach. Oh, 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 oh. You, never, yeah. you, you can never catch up to six weeks. You know? yeah. And I, I always thought that was, it's finding that little, like, just that correct little turn of phrase that, that makes it work, you know. Well, you, you stole my question, Mark, because I was going to ask who his inspiration was when he was getting started, and we've heard that. Well, thought. I like anybody. I like ben. I like any comedian that looked normal but was funny. I was never a big fan of the throw a pie or the funny clothes or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, Milt Burl seemed always a little over the top to me. Yeah. I was like the un understated. My mother was, was Scottish, so they, they always have that sort of underplayed English humor type of thing. Yeah. So your mother was Scottish, your father was Italian. Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. They spoke Italian? No. <laughs> no, no. no my, your my, father. Did my, you say that your parents spoke Italian? My, my, my grandparents did. My grandparents. dad did speak Italian, but it was a funny combination because it was the best food and just the worst food. <laughs> you know, my Aunt Nettie, she would say, would you like a Coca-Cola, Jimmy, and a schoon? And she, she'd keep Coca-Cola in the cupboard. And she said, Jamie, it costs a fortune to keep it cold. And it tastes the same. It tastes the same, Jamie. So she'd pour me a Coke and all the fizz would be out of it, you know, and, and this stale biscuit, you know, she'd give me this scone. Like, you break your teeth eating this thing, you know. And then when we would have Sunday dinner, when the Scotch side of the family would come for Italian dinner, they would just complain. Look at the waste, Jamie. The Ital Jamie, there's only nine people here. There must be 50 meatballs. There's no reason there's so many meatballs, Jamie. The Italian people, they waste food, Jamie. It's a terrible thing. And, they do. You know, yeah, and they would just, you know, the Italian uncles say, here's five dollars. You know, my uncle Alec was the cheap skate, but the Italians would always put five dollars in your pocket. It was just a funny... I, I always liked that sort of ethnic thing, you know. Yeah. I, w I was the Shabbos goy for the Jewish family next door. I would have <laughs> right. to go over and turn out the lights on the holidays. And, 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 you know, and it just was kind of fun. I, I liked it. I, um, now everybody sort of, do, I, I don't get this anti-immigrant stuff. To me, it, it just makes it, it really fun and great. How do you manage to 
as as a, as a as a well known comedian and personality, very well known. How do you manage to stay out of politics? This is a personal well, question. I, I'm wondering. How no, you I, do I, it. I I just dropped politics. You know what it is? I found with politics. I used to do a lot of politics. I did the Tonight Show. Right. But in that era, when I did the show and when Johnny did the show. People couldn't figure out your politics. You may, well, Miss Leno, you and your Republican friends. Well, Miss Leno, you and your Democratic buddies. And you get this, you get an angry letter from both sides. And I go, oh, that's perfect. That's what I want. Now you have to give your opinion on how, well, how do you really feel about it? Well, no, I'm a comedian. You know? I mean, Rodney Dangerfield was a good friend of mine. I knew Rodney 40 years. I have no idea who he voted for. I have no, it was just about the jokes. Right. And that's all we ever talked about. I, have, we, I never discussed politics with Rodney Dangerfield. Like in, uh, who was worse here, Rickles? Huh? Rickles. Oh yeah, I like Rickles. Yeah, I love Rickles. Right. But even Rickles got in a little trouble in the end, you know. Yeah. He, you know, I, I remember once in the Tonight Show, we, you know, he said, uh, and the black guys are stealing hubcaps. Right, right, right. I, I go down. Right. First of all, they don't even have hubcaps anymore. I heard our president make some comments like that recently. Yeah, about yeah. Being Irish on St. Patrick's Day and yeah, yeah. drinking and not drinking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's quite surprising. So you haven't felt the the fear of being canceled. Well, I mean, you're always going to offend somebody. You know, it depends. I'm thinking about comedy generally. Well, There's been all those conversations. I, I've, never been, I, I've never been a com conversational. Like when I would get heckled, I would never go through the throat at the heckler. Right. You know, if there's a big fat guy heckling me, I'll make fun of his tie. <laughs> and, you know, and the guy will kind of go, oh, the guy will sense that I'm not going for the throat. I'm not trying to humiliate them because right. audience think as a crowd. They they think as that guy thinks, and if you're kind to the guy, then you're okay. If you, I mean, you can nail them, okay, but you're still going to lose some of the audience because you're a professional beating up uh, mm -hmm. a number. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. You know how to do it. They don't. So if if you reasonably, I always say, what was you going to say, sir? What is it? And then, well, then they repeat it sheepishly, and it doesn't <laughs> get a get a laugh, you know. So I never really had, I never really had that problem. Did you learn this, or do you no, know I, it? I, I think it's just, I, I, human. Well, I think you just you, you pick it up from years of doing it. You just learn how to get a crowd. You know, uh, we're working at audiences like an orchestra. I remember when Hillary Clinton was running for president. I had a joke about Hillary Clinton running for president. I'm trying to remember what it was, but it wasn't about Hillary Clinton being a woman running for president. It was about Hillary Clinton running for president. And every time I do the joke, I'd hear this guttural, <laughs> and I realized, ooh, I, don't, I, I didn't like the sound of that because they're laughing at because I think she's she a woman, her, put yeah. her down, what's she doing? You know, as opposed to trying to make fun of each candidate, you find, find the one thing, you know. So I took the joke out, and I, 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 and, and I just liked the way it played better to the audience because then you're losing women because they're laughing at those guys for laughing at the, the yeah. You know what I mean? So you, you, you learn how to temper an audience. Do you find... 20 to 30 somethings today have a different sense of humor. But every 20 to 30 had a different right. sense of humor. Right. I mean, when we were kids, my father got to Steve Mon. What's the hour? He's got an hour on his head. What, uh, what's that? <laughs> but he didn't get the ironic, wry <laughs> sense of, you yeah. know. Uh, don't forget, in the 30s, people did racist jokes just as a matter of horrible That's stuff, right. you know. Uh, then it was blonde jokes and Polish jokes, you know, whatever Italian it might, might be. Yeah, uh, okay. Scottish jokes. So each, each, each group, it's like any other business. You learn to adapt with the times. I mean, if people don't laugh at something, they're not idiots. They just didn't think it was funny, you yeah. know. But, but stuff you, people have done even... Ten years ago, you really can't do anymore. The probably the biggest one of that is gay jokes. I mean, Johnny used to do hoo -hoo, light in the loafers, hoo -hoo, all those kind of gags, right. and you can't do those anymore. No. You know, because a they don't apply, and uh, you know, so yeah, so it, it, it's just a matter of adjusting to the times. Um, without naming names, some some funny guys and gals that I've met in my life who make a living out of it professionally are actually sad when they're off camera. And when they're not on, when they're not performing, what do you like when you're not performing? Uh, pretty much, I, yeah. I, I didn't have any sort of horrible childhood, <laughs> you know. You know, so I, I never. I, I understand some people who, you know. I know Robin Williams was a very close friend of mine, but Robin had a disease, you know. With it, you know, I, it's akin to that wild boar where the horn grows back into the head, you know. And, and but that that's a little bit different, um, you know. Being funny, we, we just happen to live in an era where it pays dividends. I mean, this was during the Crusades. Who's making the soldiers laugh? That guy. All right, kill him. Kill him. Okay. 
<laughs> kill him, and then because I can get back, everybody watch again. You know, I mean, that's where yeah. you just happen to live in an era where, oh, oh that's advantageous. Because any other point you see, you were just annoying. You're an idiot. You know, what is he doing? Kill him. You know, thank you. So we think we still appreciate humor. I think so. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, so, I, I like it as an art form because yeah. it's you just show up. You know, I mean, my plane landed at six fifteen. I got over here. And, you know, you go, i got to kill 20 minutes before I go on. You know, you don't have to show up two <laughs> days earlier. With the, how's a local trombone play? Oh, uh, give me another guy. You know, you don't have any of that. Just right. write joke, tell joke, get check. Thank you. Do you write when you're traveling? Well, I'm dyslexic because I don't write right at all. If I don't think of it, I, I don't really. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, I just try to, you know, you try to keep it in your head. You know, something I used to do when I was starting out, I would do my act and I would try to let, not on stage, but I would talk my act out and write a letter with this hand just to learn how to compartmentalize so you can, you know, so that way I'm on stage. If I'm looking at that guy, I can think of something I can say to him while the act is falling out of my mouth. You know what I mean? Yeah. And are you looking for people in the audience? No, not necessarily. Play off I mean, I used to when I just worked clubs a lot. You're mm -hmm. just looking for that. But now people come, they want to hear what you have to say, and they sit and they listen, you know. So. Yeah. Any, uh, any advice for those aspiring um, superstars that are still playing the clubs? Uh, well, I mean, still playing the clubs is, I'm still playing the clubs. I mean, it's, it's a living. Um, I mean, uh, you know, whenever I meet young performers, I always say, um, try to get up somewhere, your church, a talent show at school, and don't say you're a comedian, just be the MC. That way you get up there and you say something, it gets a laugh, ooh, you say something else, that gets a laugh, ooh. Third thing you're saying, not funny. Okay, our next guest, you know, this way you're not, you know, and don't invite your friends to come hear you because your friends are the worst, you know, it's the only business where the affirmation of strangers is actually more important than friends. Because your friends would go, hey, talk about Mr. Johnson's class, you know, like whatever it might be, where strangers are what you want. You know. That's great. Great. I know that uh, we at the film festival and here in Sarasota appreciate and that's some like really, hemorrhoidal thing. Is, oh, I saw. I'm sorry. But it's it's very it's very very it's a nice heavy piece of glass. Yeah. Oh, there you go. And I know you have a zillion of these, usually for your no, car no, collection, that's, yeah, right? Yeah, no, that's right. Well, thank but you. We'd, thank uh, you. we'd be honored to present you oh, well, Sarasota you. Film Festival okay. with a Career Achievement Award. Oh, what's, well, there you are. Here you go. That's my career. Jesus, thing is heavy. It is. I told you. <laughs> Good weapon. <laughs> yeah, well, there you are. Well, cool. Well, thank you. Yeah. Why? Well, thank you. Up. You're more than welcome. Thank you for being here once again. We really appreciate it so I think much. I very old when 10 o'clock is late. I know. I know. Yeah. I have twin 14-year-old girls. Ooh, oh, boy. I got twin 14-year-olds. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, my God. You have no idea. That's funny. Yeah. You tell me about it. No, I don't have... No, we don't have any kids now. Uh, I like kids. Yeah, you like them. I, I got some kids. Yeah, there you go. Well, I don't you know what? if I like them. I got them. Um, and well, uh, yeah, I'm, no, I'm not going to ask you what your favorite car is. What's your favorite modern car? Do you have any electric cars there? I do have a couple electric cars. What'd you get? Got a 1909 Baker Electric. Uh, I, I think I saw 1914 that. 1914 Detroit Electric. Uh, I've got a Tesla. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I like electric. Are you enjoying the Tesla? Is it an everyday yeah, it's driver? Yeah, a great car. It's a great car, yeah. What's your everyday driver? Do you have one? I, no, whatever I'm driving yeah. that day is the day. Of, well, that, that's now all. That, that, that series stopped, right? Did you well, we're, we're probably we're gonna, gonna shop it, it somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. good. Well, we wish you a lot of luck with that. Well, we thanks, certainly thanks. enjoyed it. Everybody enjoyed well, it. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you very you much. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is yours. Oh, thank you. It's a hernia-inducing <laughs> award here.